now we have um, we have a panel on secularism. We we uh, we're planning to show a, a short uh, video clip, but we're not going to do that because we're running out of time. We'll show that later on in the evening. Um, Peter Tatchell is going to chair this panel. Peter Tatchell does not need introduction. He is a global campaigner for justice. It, he has been campaigning tirelessly for many, many uh, groups of people across the board and in Britain. Uh, and I'd like to welcome Honorable Mr. Peter Tatchell to chair the next panel. Thank you. Welcome to this session on secularism as a precondition for democracy. I think we all know that democracy and human rights are under attack by the religious right worldwide. Nowhere more pronounced than in the ISIS onslaught in Iraq and Syria, where the heroic democratic secular Kurdish resistance is fighting a life and death battle against Islamist tyranny in Kobani and across the emerging state of Rojava. Their fight is our fight. They must win. The international community has a duty to aid the Kurdish heroes in the same way that progressive people aided Republican Spain in the 1930s and the anti-Nazi resistance in occupied Europe in the 1940s. The Kurds are fighting IS clerical fascism. Yet sadly, much of the Western left, anti-fascist, anti-war, and anti-imperialist movements refuse to support their struggle. They refuse to support secular Democrats who are fighting clerical fascism. And that is a great betrayal. <laughs> it is further proof that some of the left are now the new right. There are, however, some of us on the left who still believe in internationalism and solidarity based on the principle of universal democracy, social justice, and human rights. And we are here today to say that we stand by those principles. And our panel today will discuss the vital importance of secularism to democracy to affirm those fundamental universal values, that every person on this planet is entitled to human rights, and that no belief system, whether religious or otherwise, has a right to abrogate those fundamental universal human rights. Each of our speakers today will address us for a maximum of eight to 10 minutes, and we'll follow that with a question and answer session and an open debate.